welcome. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 30, today, verses 7 to 10. I'll read them just now. Aaron shall burn fragrant incense on it. He shall burn it every morning when he trims the lamps. When Aaron trims the lamps at twilight, he shall burn incense. There shall be perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer any strange incense on this altar or burn offering or meal offering, and you shall not pour out a drink offering on it. Aaron shall make atonement on its horns once a year. He shall make atonement on it with the blood of the sin offering of atonement once a year throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. Okay, so we're carrying on. We're in chapter 30 here, and we're looking, first of all, at the, the incense altar. And now here, we're getting into the, uh, the incense. And remember that the incense in the Bible often stands for prayers. So notice here, we're talking about the evening and the morning. We just talked about the continual the other day. Uh, this is a prayer that goes up before. It's in the holy place, not in the most holy place. It goes up there at the incense altar, the high priest. Uh, he's wearing his bells and everything, and when he goes in so that he doesn't die, remember we learned that. This is very intense. He's in God's house. And evening and morning, there's a sacrifice that's offered in the courtyard, but also evening and morning, the priest, the high priest, burns incense every day, 365 days a year, every day, morning and evening, without fail. He sends up incense to the God of heaven, and that represents the prayers of all of God's people. Think about it, it's, it's really something, if you'll pause for a minute, I mean, just think, let's suppose that you're in the United States of America. Uh, we're not worried about these borders, but let's just use that. Uh, there is a number, the angels have it. There is a number today, when today's over, the angels will be able to say in the United States of America, this many million people prayed to God in the morning and they did it in the evening. This many people had a family worship in the morning today. This many families had it. Uh, this many didn't have it. There's an actual number. You and I don't know it and, and we don't need to know it. We want to be included in those numbers as, as participants. But the angels know. God knows. God knows exactly how many. And so there's always prayers going up to God. There's always a group of faithful people. God always has a remnant who are faithful to him, who are seeking to be faithful to him and keep his commandments and follow his, his entire plan and purpose. So here we have the high priest. He's represented as sending this incense up. He's not represented. He's commanded. This is what he does. He's not just represented. He is sending those prayers up morning and evening. He puts the incense out, and it burns the incense there right before the most holy place. But he's in the holy place. So here's another piece that the, the priest is doing. And this is part of the whole ministry that he has for God's people. Now, did you notice, uh, we already mentioned the other day that there's a once a year thing that he does, but there's also, this is every single day. Uh, but there's something else that was interesting here, and I wonder if you caught it here. There's not to be any strange incense or any alien incense offered up. Now, if, if the incense is symbolic of prayers, then that would mean that we wouldn't be sending off any alien or strange prayers to God. So that brings up an interesting question, too. What would be a strange prayer? Uh, God has surely heard a lot of very strange, strange as in weird prayers. But what about strange as in something that is alienated or opposite to God's plan? What does God do with that? Well, first of all, we shouldn't be sending strange prayers to him. Uh, we could send prayers of, you know, we don't know, we're ignorant, we're looking for insight and wisdom, we're not sure what to do, what about this, what about this? prayers for guidance, uh, but what would a strange prayer be? Strange prayer would be something that is alien to God's expressed, revealed will, right? So if God says, for example, uh, we are to keep the seventh day Sabbath holy, and I'm saying uh, maybe my preference is to keep Tuesday, you know, I, hey, it's, it, it works for my schedule, it works better for my family, we just want to do Tuesday as the holy day, how about that? Uh, we would look to the Bible for any counsel there. But, you know, if I send it and I pled with God to please accept my Tuesday as though it's my Sabbath, I'm going to work on the true Saturday or Sabbath, but um, please accept my Tuesday as, the, as, a, as a compensation, as a different, as, as, as my Sabbath. That would be a strange prayer. That would be very strange. Strange as in outside of God's will. God has revealed his will about Sabbath, right? He's revealed his will about Tuesday. Tuesday's a working day. Sabbath is a day of worship, the seventh day of the week. So God has made his will clear. So anything that is opposite his revealed uh, known will would be part of that strange prayer. And I think he receives a lot of strange prayers, a lot of people praying for weird things 
that are outside, you know, his plan. So anyway, may God help us so that we don't send up into his, uh, to him, prayers that are strange. A weird prayer is okay. Uh, you know, God will be the judge of that, but a prayer that is openly opposite him, that is a alienating prayer, and, and that would be to, to ask God to be contrary to who he is, to ask him to do something contrary to what true morality is. That would be that would be a strange prayer. Let's not do any of those. All right, God bless you and bless me. Help us to, to find his will and to plead with him in harmony for that, that, that in my heart would be in harmony with the heart of God and that my prayers would be acceptable in his sight. God bless you today.